Chapter 14, Uncertain Futures I watched in silence as she walked away from me. Long I had heard many heard others of my race speak of the heartaches they felt before they attached the, before they allowed themselves to fade. As a youth, I had scuffed at the idea, even as I matured. I had not only truly understand the depth of emotion they must have felt to allow themselves to fade into the halls of Mandos, yet I felt the depth of emotion now. My heart yearned to reach out and stop Elena from walking away from me. It screamed at me a thousand different reasons to give her, but I could not. She was happy here. I had seen such smiles light her face as she ran and played with the elflings of the city. Years fell away from her when she played and smiled with them, the smile that haunted my ve- my every dream and waking thought. Yet, what had I to offer her? My path was bound to the fellowship, my destiny uncertain. I knew not whether I would ever see my home again, let alone have one to offer her one day. Loath I was to face it, but the gal- Galadhol would could offer her more than I could. He could offer Elena a home and safety that was beyond my reach. He could offer her the continued happiness that caused her face to lighten such smiles every day. Her past had been darkened by such horrors that I could barely even fathom, and I knew she had still kept some of the darkest horrors from me, shielding me from the worst horrors. She deserved something bright and good in her future. Her future was more than entitled to happiness and safety for once. She deserved to finally have a home. I could only offer her uncertainty. Still, Galadriel's city silent over- offer weighed heavily upon my mind. On entering the city, she had looked into the hearts and minds of all the fellowship, weighing our courage and testing our resolve, offering to each of us what we wanted and what tempted us most. I know not what she had been, what had been in the minds of most of the others, but images of Elena had been my offering, images of her smiling and happy as she walked by my side in the woods of my father's realm. Mirkwood lay only just to the north. I could take Elena and return her to the safety of my father's kingdom. I could enscone her with his realm and ensure her safety. Yet, I would have to leave the fellowship behind to do so, though Eldron had laid no oath upon us to travel further than our consequence or resolve could bear. I knew my own will would not allow me to tarry from my path. I had committed myself to this journey, and I could not turn away now. If we did not see the ring destroyed, not even my realm would be safe for Elena. I had to let her go, and ensure that she would be safe here in Lothran. I would ensure that she could find happiness, love, and love here, though it cleaved my heart in two. Her wishes and desires would not be honored by me. If she loved the March Warden, I would bury my heart and continue to wish her well. Tamping my emotions down, I turned and walked back to our campsite and the tent I shared with Estel. Yet... Something of my emotions must have shone through on my face as I entered our tent. The ranger had been reclining in his cot, glanced up at my entrance, and sat up in alarm as I walked closer. "'What is wrong, my friend?' he asked quietly in Sindarin. We we spoke western around the others as was necessary, but when it was just the two of us, we slipped... We slipped easily into conversing in the language we were both more comfortable with. Nothing is wrong, Aragorn, I assured him, using his given name instead of the name he had been known by as a child. The drawn expression on your face and the sadness in your eyes say otherwise. What has happened? I suppose it was too much to hope for him and to hope for in trying to fool him. Human though he was, he was of the Dundane, and the elvish blood in him made him more perceptive than other humans, a quality, I ruefully recalled, that Elena shared with him. Many nights, as as we shared at the stars, she was able to read my expressions like a book, knowing there are thoughts I was keeping and trying to hide from the world. I spoke more with Elena, I admitted softly. What was said to cause such grief in your eyes, he asked, standing from his cot and crossing the tent. He gestured to the small table in the corner as he sat, and I reluctantly joined him. She shall remain in the city when we depart, I told, instead of developing into the words we had exchanged. She told you she was staying? Aragorn asked, clearly surprised. I did not answer. She actually told you she was staying? Aragorn repeated. No, I admitted. But she shall remain here with Haldar. How can you be so certain if she has not said that she shall? Aragorn pressed. 
My temper broke. Standing, I angrily asked, For what reason would she not stay? What reason can I give her to follow us into the wilds and into danger? She loves the March Warden. The ranger calmly stood as well and asked, What exactly did she say, my friend? Did she love? Did she say she loved Haldar? I shook my head and quietly confessed the words still whispering, tant- tantalizing in my ears. She asked me a re- she asked me to give her a reason to go. Yet what reason can I give her when she loved the when she loves the Gal- Galadol? I have nothing to offer her that could so change her heart. My body felt weak, and I once again collapsed into the chair I had just sprung from. She asked you to give her a reason to go with us instead of remaining here, Aragorn repeated as he too slowly retook his seat. I smiled ruefully at his careful manner, as though he were afraid of starting, startling a skittish deer in the forest. Yes, I answered shortly. What was your response to her? That I could give her no reason. What What else was I to have said? If she was, she has given her heart to Haldar, there is nothing more to be done save ensure that she shall have the happiness she deserves. Aragorn chuckled as he leaned back in his chair. You fool of an elf, he stated with a smile. I bristled at his tone, but he continued before I could challenge his words. She does not love him, he assured me. I remembered my own desperate words at, to her as such in her own angry response. She had clearly disagreed with my assessment. She does. She must, I insisted. He shook his head. Then why did she ask you to give her a reason to leave the city? He pushed. I do not understand. He leaned forward and tapped his fingers on the table as though to further make his point. If she loved him and wanted to stay here, she would not be asking you for a reason to leave. If she loved the elf, she would simply require an excuse to deny would not require an excuse to deny his offer. She would not she would have simply accepted it and said her goodbyes to us. She was asking you to tell her if you wanted her to go. Of course I wish for her to go with us. I have told her this, I replied, confused by what Aragorn's point was. You told her why we all wanted her company with us. You have not told her why you personally wish for her to come with us. You have not told her how you really feel, have you? He crossed his arms as he leaned back again and considered me. She knows my feelings. Never has another being known me so well. She can hear my very thoughts, I pointed out. She barely speaks a handful of words in Sindarin. You told me yourself that she commented how easy it was to be around all of us, since most of our thoughts are in language she does not speak nor understand. You're assuming too much, my friend. I think she was asking you to tell her if you feel for her as she feels for you. As she feels for me, I repeated, my heart thumping in my chest. Surely her words could not mean what I thought them to mean. He sighed and ran a hand over his tired features. It is plain to the rest of us that there has been something between the two of you for some time. It does not escape the notice of any of us that barely a night passes when you two do not sit talking long after the rest of us have retired. We share most of our watches together. Of course we have spent many nights speaking, I defended. Yet, even after we reach safety of the city, the two of you sit under the stars most nights talking, he countered. Even with her growing friendship with the March Warden, it is you she often seeks. The rest of us... Uh, da, da, da. You sh- I lost my spot. Oh, it is you she often spe- seeks out when she is troubled or upset. When she is distressed, she pushes the we- the rest of us away, hiding her grief and sorrow. But you, you she allows to comfort her. Whether it is merely a friendship between you both, I cannot speak to. But in my heart, I think she is as uncertain as I am to what is between you and was asking you to speak your feelings. You truly believe so? I asked, hope forming a lump in my throat. Why else would she ask you to give her a reason to go with our number? If she loved the March Warden, she would simply stay with him. She would not need a reason to leave, he repeated. I simply, I stood suddenly. I must speak with her. I exited the tent before my friend could answer, crossing the campsite quickly to stand before Elena's tent. A soft glow gently lit the canvas sides of the tent, and a shadow silently moved about within. Elena, I softly called, I must speak with you. Her handmaiden stepped out, her eyes cast differently downwards. Where is your mistress? I asked. She has not returned for the night, the young Ethel answered with a curtsy. Thank you, I replied. Disappointment piercing me as the Ethel returned to the tent, and whatever her previous tasks had been. The ember from the evening's fire still soft, still glowed softly, so I sat beside the fire and used a stick to stir the coals as I waited for Elena to return. 
Hope had surged within me at Aragorn's words. But what if he was mistaken? What if she did love the March Warden, and was even now telling him she would stay with him, and giving her heart to him? She would be forever beyond my reach then. Worse yet, what if Aragorn was right, and she did feel for me, as I for her, and yet, because I had not spoken the words to her sooner, had turned to the March Warden instead? What if my words drove her to choosing the Galadiel? I wanted her happiness, but if I could be the one to give her that happiness, and what of my own? My fingers softly touched my lips as I remembered Elena's press to mine. She had said she acted on impulse and adrenaline, but had she felt something more than friendship for even then? For me, even then? Often my mind had conjured the, conjured the memory and feel, her, feel of her lips touching mine. How often I had wished that surprise had not ruled my body then. How often I want, had wondered at what would have could, occurred had my own response, response had been different. What would have happened if I had returned her kiss? As the sky brightened to gray, I began to fear that I destroyed all hope for myself. I feared that she had made her choice and decided to stay in Lauren. Legolas, what are you doing still up? Elena's voice came suddenly from behind me, and I stood and turned to face her. I was was hoping to speak with you again, I admitted, my voice breaking with my nervousness. What about? she asked, hesitantly stepping closer. I still stayed still and let her slowly come closer. I tried to read her face, but could see nothing but puzzlement there. Have you decided what you shall do? I could not help a- could not help asking. As I imagined her telling me she would remain in the city with Helder, I really realized I tr- had truly come to love her. The feeling had slipped into my heart so slowly I had not even noticed when it had taken root there. It was in Trent entrenched so deeply within my heart now that I feared my heart might be torn a, a san, torn asunder if she chose to stay. I told Halder I couldn't stay with him. You were right. I guess I don't really love him. But Gladriel offered me here a place here as well, she told me. I felt my heart soar and plummet simultaneously. You will stay? I asked, my voice nearly quivering. She shook her head. I can't leave the hobbits alone to face their future. Boromir either, for that matter. So I've decided to go with and keep you guys company for a while longer. My heart plummeted further. She was accompanying us for the sake of the hobbits and the human. At least you shall come with us, I spoke, forcing a smile and feeling my heart lighten slightly at the thought. Mary and Pippin shall be pleased with your decision. She smiled softly and wistfully. Yeah, I guess I'd miss those two in in particular too much if I decided to stay here. She glanced at her tent. Well, I guess I should go make sure all my stuff is ready to go. We'll probably be leaving soon. I nodded and watched her disappear into her tent. Perhaps the Dundon had been mistaken on her feelings for me. Perhaps she felt only the friendship and kinship she shared with the hobbits. At the very least, my heart eased with the knowledge that she would come with us and and I would not have to bid her farewell, even if she could not return my love. I would consider myself blessed to have her continued friendship on our journey to bolster my courage in the darkness to come.